Here you can see 100 kilograms of materials to make thermite and this is a bucket filled with frozen gasoline. Today we are going to use this in order to answer everybody's burning question what will happen when the liquid iron from the thermite comes into contact with frozen gasoline. The plan was to investigate why thermite and ice explodes as shown by the Mythbusters a rather long time ago. I'd say that was an explosion. So the first thing to do was to try and reproduce the effect of the thermite and ice explosion. With the help of my brother I went back to where I blew up one kilogram of sodium because that is the safest place I know to do such terribly unsafe experiments. This is Hillbilly Elias showing you how to mix your own tannerite. This time we try. <laughs> I mean it almost goes without saying, but seriously, please refrain from repeating this experiment because the only thing that's safe to say is that this isn't safe. To my big surprise, the thermite cruise wheel I built from aerated concrete somehow survived this completely intact. Now that the groundwork was done, I invited my friends Thylabs and Advanced Tinkering to burn 100 more kilograms of thermite in order to figure out why this explodes. They helped me a lot with performing these experiments and making this video possible, so thanks a lot to them. A link to each of their channels is in the description. The two common theories why thermite and ice explode are first a steam explosion caused by the rapid evaporation of water when the 2000 degrees celsius liquid thermite contacts the water and second a chemical reaction whatever that might be. Using the frozen gasoline, we could at least prove or disprove the steam explosion theory. But before we get to that, we also tried a watermelon, table sugar and dry ice. We started with the watermelon, which is water made solid by absorbing it into the living cells of the watermelon. If this would explode, we would know that the water would not have to be frozen in order for this reaction to occur. So we mixed up another 20 kilograms of thermite using magnetite sand and aluminium turnings, added our fuse mixture and cut a hole into the watermelon to ensure the best possible contact between watermelon and liquid iron. After that the watermelon was placed beneath the thermite crucible, we just lit the fuse and stood well back. That was probably way too much thermite for the size of the watermelon. It created a rather big flow of liquid red glowing iron metal, which looked really cool. But there was certainly no explosion, just some minor splashing of the molten iron metal. However, when trying to cool down the big chunk of molten iron in water after it solidified, it created quite a big chaos. <laughs> LOL! <laughs> LOL! <laughs> it took basically forever for this to cool down, even after it was in the water, demonstrating just how much energy this reaction releases. <laughs> the next thing we tried was to blow up regular table sugar. It is a carbohydrate, so basically water that is chemically bound to carbon. We used 10 kilograms and kept it in the original bags in order to make a nice mold out of it for the thermite. I never knew before that sugar can burn so incredibly well just in our regular atmosphere. But you can probably imagine at the temperatures of thermite pretty much any organic substance can burn really well in air. 
Interestingly enough, the sugar started foaming quite a lot while burning, creating something that resembles the elephant's foot in Chernobyl. Luckily, it isn't radioactive, so I guess we should be fine. I found that it looked really fascinating, however, and it created some really interesting carbon foam that was super light. Maybe we invented a future high-tech material right here. An hour later, the remaining thermite still glowed more than red hot. While this was cooling down, Advanced Tinkering was trying to make a ruby using thermite. At least we succeeded in making a really cool glowing hole in the ground. And we managed to make the red color of a ruby. Can I so tun, als leuchten? <laughs> but that would be an entirely different project getting that to succeed properly. The next thing on the list that we wanted to react with our thermite was dry ice because it should certainly be possible to create a steam explosion with it. So we weighed out about 13 kilograms of it and made a nice mold out of it beneath our thermite crucible. This was basically the least spectacular of all the reactions. The thermite and the dry ice didn't seem to interact like at all. The dry ice basically just swam on the surface of the molten iron. But it looked really cool seeing the super cold dry ice floating on the surface of the incredibly hot molten iron. Dry ice is quite different from water ice because of its much lower freezing point and because it won't melt at atmospheric pressure. That's why we tried another kind of ice more similar to water. The ice of choice was frozen gasoline. More precisely frozen cyclohexane which is really similar to gasoline just much more expensive but also much purer. We could freeze it in pretty much exactly the same way as the water because the freezing point is around 7 degrees celsius and its boiling point is 81 degrees celsius which is quite close to water. Also it is highly flammable so this should be a lot of fun. As you might expect, this produced a flame with quite a decent size. However, there was definitely no explosion. This indicates that the thermite and ice explosion most likely isn't a steam explosion and there must be something else going on. At the same time, a very dark rain cloud appeared very near to our experiment. How dare you! Which has totally nothing to do with 10 liters of frozen cyclohexane burning. But there was certainly nothing left at the end besides the reaction products from the thermite. For the last reaction, we wanted to repeat the water ice experiment one last time as a direct comparison and to confirm our results. The last water ice thermite reaction definitely turned out to be the most spectacular experiments of all the experiments we performed. With that we demonstrated quite clearly that there has to be some reaction going on between the ice and the thermite. Trying to figure out what that reaction might be is completely beyond the scope of this video and would be an entire research endeavor to try and figure out. Let's see how long it takes after this video until someone publishes a paper about this reaction mechanism. Thanks a lot for watching.